to spend your uh, holidays now understanding what is the proper packaging, you can do it and you probably will not be finished by January the 1st because it's too much going on in terms of requirements, restrictions, regulations and so on in terms of packaging and documents for exports and everything like that. And I, hopefully you will be very successful in your project and some years down the road you will be you will get familiar with every of uh, the, the export procedure, but I don't think that this is the, the proper time for you. Same thing about foreign investment regulations, regulations and marketing. Yes, there are experts. They can do it for you. They can give you some advice. Some people even do it for free. They are good friends, good buddies, and they can give you a few points. When the business starts going, then it's time to look for either a lawyer or somebody that is familiar with those requirements. Okay, enough of legal aspects, those are too boring, not for you, you are in love with your project. No? So let, let's go to other things that can really become an obstacle. And yesterday I, I was asked specifically about the political aspects, and those political aspects are, are important. And when you look at your immediate markets, uh, you look at all throughout Latin America, the Caribbean, the Antillas, and so on, we know by by heart who is who, which uh, governments are unstable, which governments are really mean and they try to mess with you and to place some obstacles. But when you go into the Asian markets, when you go to markets that are not so familiar with us, then you need to look and do some serious research about what kind of countries, that, what is the role of the government, or, or even what is now a term that is very much in fashion now is the governance for that particular country. This is very important because you don't need, you don't want to be sending goods and not being paid for or having restrictions. Like you made some money in X country, but look now, you cannot repatriate, you cannot get it back was profit that you earn because the government is particularly um, inclined to mess with foreign enterprises. And there are many such countries. I will not name it because then I'm, I'm, I'm uh, so many times I'm unlucky and I get somebody in the audience from that specific country that I was criticizing. And then, so I, 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 I try to stay away from uh, naming that country when I talk about the, the negatives. So once I do have uh, mentioned a few important things, something that you need to know about the international environment. Now, let's uh, take a look on, on how we can do the research to understand So market research uh, is very important in, international, uh, in the international environment. It is very important in, in your own market, but it's not that necessary when you deal with a small territory or a market that you know by heart. So international marketing is a different thing because then you go into territories that you are unfamiliar with. So you need to know a few things about um, in international market uh, research and it's the first uh, task for you is to identify the product and make decisions regarding the product. Is uh, Can I sell the product as is in my country? Do I need to make some changes and so on? The second and very important, and I mentioned at the very beginning, is to select the appropriate market. All markets look very good, and believe me, when you are sitting in, 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 at your desk and you get a, a purchase order, a PO from a different country, everything looks exceptional, and you start uh, daydreaming. Okay, I received this order from Pakistan, and I look into the uh, CIA facts about Pakistan, and I know that this is uh, a country that is doing pretty well now and with a lot of population and so on. So you start dreaming that this is the, the proper market and you get rich immediately just by selling into Pakistan. Then you realize that the market is very distant, that you don't understand how people really deal in, in terms of business over there. So. Uh, it's time for you to relax and say, okay, now uh, let me do some research specifically about those markets that I want to be 
what I want to be commercializing my products. And the third point, of course, is uh, as I already mentioned uh, um, uh, as well in the beginning, is how to enter that market that you already said, this is my market. So you have some tools, yes, of course, you have many tools. And you have uh, to, first of all, make a distinction between primary and secondary market research. And this is not the, the topic of this uh, video conference, so I tell you very briefly. Primary uh, information or primary sources of information are those that you yourself develop, perhaps with the assistance, with an agency, with a, an individual, but it's something very much tailor-made for your own purpose, that's for you. And the secondary source of information is something that is already there, has been published, is available, maybe you have to pay for, but it's there. So if you ask me about which one is better to rely on primary or secondary uh, sources, I will tell you, if you find the secondary sources already, this quick, this immediate, you have the information. Provided though that you don't have to pay for those secondary sources, and many are available. I will talk uh, about those sources in a little while. Meanwhile, primary sources, yes, you can. Uh, you have different tools. Uh, you're probably familiar with some of those tools, not with everyone. You can develop like a, a survey, a general survey. This is more scientific. It's more quantitative. You also can have a field study. In talking in international terms, you can even take a trip and, and do by on first hand a visit to the country. There are some observation methods to see how things work in that particular country that you are unfamiliar with. You can do interviews and you can do focus groups. In my opinion, for you that are in the initial stage of going international, the best bet are the interviews and by interviews, I, I, I'm not meaning going with a micro or with a tape recorder and asking people. It's just a, a going for specific people that are the reference, those people that can give you information, very valuable information in your industry. And you don't have to look for uh, 400 people or anything as such. You can just go to four, five people they have some knowledge of the industry. And there's some magic in the international arena. When you approach people in a different country, you probably get a much kind a response from those people. If you go to the, your neighbor or, or somebody in your market, they probably will be reluctant and also thinking that you are a competitor. You are just disguised as a and in information uh, as a journalist or something when in fact you are uh, trying to, to get valuable information that is, uh, is only for them to keep. When you go international and you just uh, pick up the phone and call some people in other countries, I'm sure you'll find very nice people <coughs> giving you a hand, giving you some tips. And finally, those are the focus groups. And focus groups for you within your uh, age range are very uh, easy for you. Uh, focus groups is just collecting a number, inviting a number of people, a very reduced number of people, 10, 12 people at the most. And you ask questions and you let them speak because they, this, the beauty of the focus group is that people speak. People really talk and talk too much, but you get information and that's all, all, almost free. Perhaps you just uh, make a, give a gift to the participants, but nothing else. It's not expensive and you can do it on your own. Yes, there are agencies and they will charge you a fortune and they have those uh, nice one-way mirrors and they take notes and they do all sort of uh, nice stuff, but it's something that you can do it easily and you can go to your local university and search for foreign students, students that come from that particular country, and, and have the focus group. So there's something easy for you to do. Then on the secondary market research, and, and uh, please, all of this perhaps is a bit a, a little bit dry. This presentation, as you can see, very few pictures because 
what I want to help you out is with your project. And for your project, you need this information as is. You don't need the pictures. You can add the pictures on your own. But then we go to those uh, secondary market uh, research sources, uh, sources of information. And there are many official centers. Uh, in Mexico, we have a beautiful one that is called ProMexico. ProMexico, you have the same entity all over the world, which is an entity that is trying to promote the export from your country. So they have good information, and most of the time, this information for free is for you to use. There are the chambers of commerce, the export associations, the banks. Yes, bankers. I hope there's nobody here in the audience. Uh, but with all due respect, they charge for their services. But not so much when they uh, provide a, a commercial intelligent report. And there are many, really, by leading banks that uh, they target a, a country and they are very valuable and for free, believe it or not. Uh, chambers of, of Commerce, in the past, YouTube used to be like the only source for you to find out about an international market. Not anymore. Those are out, out of, outdated now, are a bit uh, out of fashion. But still, you can just visit the local chamber. Uh, in every country, there is always the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. So if you're trying to sell into the United States your product or your service, you can get a lot of information and so many times for free. Then you can go to specialized consultants, and there are plenty of people trying to make a living out of giving you advice that is valuable but also expensive. So try to look for friends and people, because at this stage of your project, you don't need to, uh, to have such a professionally made research. All that you need is to input some data to get an understanding, a grasp of, of the market that you want to serve, and not much more. But for your project, yes, you need to include that information, and there will be time for you when your company start really picking up uh, to go to one of those specialist, co specialist consultants and get the information. And you pay for them, by then you'll be a millionaire, and it will be it will be no problem to pay for these services. Then there are also many free publications in the internet. If you take up your time and you dedicate, say, one full day just to search on the internet, you find so many documents that you'll be yourself in trouble because then your second task will be to select what are those documents, which ones are the good documents that really help you and which ones are not. Okay? So information, yes, you need absolutely need to include it. You want to present your project to a banker for uh, getting uh, some some cash or some financial investment, uh, other people, a potential partner, and so on. And it's absolutely a must to include some sort of information on the market. And at this point of time, you do a little bit, as I advise, of primary market uh, research with the interviews or the focus groups. Plus, you go and look for those uh, publications that are free, that are available through the internet, and you are good now, you are in, in good terms to, to put something in writing. Because remember, um, I see so many presentations, and presentations are good, then you see the pressy and, and all that, those nice stuff, but there's always the need for a support uh, and evidence, uh, and that uh, even today, even with all the technology, people are expecting a written re a report. Maybe it's not printed; it's on a on a CD, on a DVD, whichever means you you, you are better for you, and certainly for the, uh, the those people reading your report. But you need the report. The report is like a business card. Is saying yes, I did. I, I went through my homework. I did it. And that's for you, okay? So now let's talk a little bit about international markets. And once again, market selection. There are different software programs that do the, the selection for you, but I don't advise to go through all those uh, software programs. 
because there's nothing better than uh, using your own judgment and the information that you already collected for you to do this analysis. And you have to be very careful about the risk evaluation. Uh, yesterday, somebody asked me about it, and I said, well, there's the country risk, which is the main indicator to understand what is the real risk of investing or even sending products to a specific uh, country. And you need to, to know the resources and capabilities of your own company and see which ones are the countries where they match. If your company is quite small, it's like a one-man operation, then you look at the uh, India, at, at the Chinese market, and there's way too much for you. So uh, my advice is to look for markets where you can be relevant, where you can be significant in that market, and obviously, at the very beginning, those markets are more reduced, something that where you can really make decisions immediately at an instant, at a, at a moment of time. And you need to look at the competition in those markets, in the prices, and the commercial margins. Commercial margins is the story of how much people make of each and every stage between uh, from the initial product, the initial manufacturer of the product, to the and consumer, and because there are many people really getting some part, a piece of the pie. And if you are familiar with this in your own market, be prepared for the international markets, because in the international markets, there are so many people that import and that distribute and this and that, many, many, many people adding up in margin. So the initial price that you saw, uh, that was so seducing for you because you trip to the United Kingdom and you saw that your product was selling for four times the price that you are selling it in your market. When you start discounting and or taking into account all those people involved into this distribution um, um, chain, then you see that there is not a real profit or not as much as you expect. So you also need to look into the market potential, the legal environment, the cultural environment, all those things that we already previously mentioned. So how can you go into those markets? There are some indirect, uh, indirect means, which very basically uh, is working like this. I either hire somebody in my market or I rely on some people that take my product in my own country and they sell it somewhere else. Yes, I know, for you it's, more, it's easier, it's easier for everyone, but there's a, a, a problem, or there, are more, there is more than one problem. The first problem is about the profits. You know how much those people are making, how much is for you, because you are just giving like a blind check for, to someone for people to sell the product at whatever the price they want. So it's very uh, good, it's a good exercise for you if you look for um, indirect export, at the very least to look for prices for the product into the market that the people are selling. It. So they don't come to you with that, uh, allow me the word, the, the expression, with that baloney saying, oh no, we are not making enough profit and we're losing money because there's there are many costs involving with the, with exporting your product, and then they will uh, absolutely would like to get a, a, a lower price from from you. And if you are ignorant of what happened in other markets, then you will believe those people and lower your price and your profit. So at the very least, if you want to rely in those people, you need to know what is the selling price of your product in such a country as you want to, uh, where, you have to where you want to have a presence. The second thing is uh, when you give people a blank check, you're also giving uh, people uh, the possibility to make many funny things, such as registering your, your own brand, um, doing a patent for your, pro for your product, uh, doing many things, taking advantage of the uh, of your of the fact that you are not present in that market, so let's go then to what I recommend for you, which is direct sale. 
or selling through distributors or to agents. In this slide, you see other possibilities, such as opening up a branch, a branch office or even a subsidiary. But you know what? This very distant from us because we just try to start our own company, our own business, and we're far away from the decisions of uh, making uh, having branches established in a country or, or a subsidiary or producing in, in, in a particular nation. So very much what are the options open for us? And there are three. One, we sell it, and we sell it directly. Uh, in the past, this used not to be an option for a, for a beginner in international uh, marketing and, and trade uh, because it was hardly in, in, it was almost impossible to sell directly. Well, not anymore, and new people are lucky in your generation because now you can sell it from day one uh, directly. Uh, you can use DHL or FedEx or all those companies. They can do even small deliveries on your behalf, uh, and they get, the, yes, you pay them, but you don't pay nothing out of the ordinary. So this is something that you would like to consider, which is, to uh, approach customers directly. It very much depends on the type of product you know, or the service. If you are trying to uh, look into the consumer, into the mass market, this impossible because you cannot keep control and the management of those sales. But if you are uh, selling a very specialized product or service, then uh, it is good that you um, um, that you address those people individually. Also, you can go to distributors, which is the uh, most uh, traditional way is to choose those people that can sell, to sell the product for you. And also you can look for agents. And agents, um, they can um, uh, promote your product in exchange, either for a fee or for a reward. The reward is a commission on the sales that you make. Okay, having said that, we go now into, I'm sorry, I believe there is a question here. Um, allow me to answer for a second, please. Thanks. Okay, let's go to the next slide. And Well, not to the same, uh, this slide, the mixed mechanism, the piggyback and the export consortium and joint venture franchise and so on. Because although those are very good alternatives, uh, those are not for us at this uh, moment of the game. Uh, those are for very uh, large companies already established. So let's go to the, this last part of this section, which is segmentation. Segmentation means taking, looking at the pie, at the whole pie, and looking for that piece that is good for us, either for our taste or because that's the only one available or the only one where we fit. And for the segmentation or, or looking for the segment the segment or what we call the market the, the market niche, uh, we need to be uh, very cautious and look for a segment that is very much homogeneous so people react in a similar manner to our uh, product offering, and we look in the, into this segment into the market niche. The market niche is even more specific because there's the sort of uh, the group of people, the group of companies that are the very best for our product. Okay, we already have talked about some of the uh, variables for segmentation. So let's skip this slide and go into the tools. Those are important. Those are tools. There's something that you can use into your advantage. And this is called marketing mix. You have heard from the times you were in at the university uh, the, the four Ps. And the four Ps are very important because the four Ps are those um, uh, uh, tools that you can use to an extent. Uh, some you can uh, use it freely in the long term, so you can use it in the immediate term. You can make some decisions uh, regarding the product about, for instance, quality of the product, how much quality you want uh, uh, for your product. And I know everybody is thinking I want the best possible quality, 
but that's not a good answer because you may, if you look for the best <coughs> possible uh, quality, the highest quality, you're also looking for higher cost and perhaps <coughs> for excluding your own product for uh, consumers that are not 